Hello, Providence kids and families. Welcome back to our weekly kids gathering. My name is Andrea, and I love hanging out with you guys learning about Jesus. I hope you had an awesome Easter last week celebrating the resurrection at your own house. I really miss seeing all of you in person, but someday we will get back together again. But until then, let's continue doing all of the things that we do every single week. So, just like we always do, let's put our hands up in the air and say good morning to God on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. What's, What's up, God? God? Now, let's give an air high five to each other through the screen. Are you ready? One, two, three. All right, now give an air high five to your mom or dad. Ready, go. Parents, if you are on our email list, you'll know that today we need just one prop for our big God story. Today you will need a key. And if you're checking in for the first time, you'll have a moment to grab the key while we sing a song. All right now, everybody let's stand up together because we're gonna sing Everybody Everywhere. From the top of my head, my toes, I can't keep it all inside. I want to jump with all my mind from the top of my head, way, way down to my toes. I can't keep it all inside. I want to dance with all my for our sins. But on day three, Jesus rose again. Jesus is alive. alive. You know it. Jesus didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead and proved that he is God. The most amazing thing about all of it is that he did it for us, for you. Jesus came to earth to live as a man, to die, and to live again. Let's take some time to thank Jesus for loving us so much and ask the Holy Spirit to teach us. So, let's fold our hands, close our eyes, and bow our heads. Dear God, we think you are so amazing. You won against death by raising again to life. As we listen to the story today, Holy Spirit, would you be with us and quiet our hearts and minds so you can teach us. We pray this in your name, amen. Although Jesus had told his followers that he was going to die, they still didn't fully understand what he meant. So when Jesus died on the cross, they were very sad. Aww. Mary went to visit Jesus' body at the tomb. But when she got there, the tomb was empty. Huh? Mary quickly told Peter and the other disciple who was with him, and they ran to the tomb. Quick, 
get up off your feet and run across your room right now. Ready, go! Woo! Now, remember how something amazing happened to Mary? What was it? Who did she see? She saw Jesus. Jesus. He appeared to her and proved that he was alive and that he had risen. Right away, Mary went and she told the other disciples. Jesus rose from the dead and the disciples heard about it from Mary, but they hadn't seen it for themselves. Because their leader had just been killed, they were afraid that others might try to kill them too. So they all gathered together in one house and locked the doors. Get your key. Are you ready? Let's lock it. All right, now let's read John 20, 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Jesus, who had been dead, was now alive and standing by his disciples. How would you have felt if you knew that your friend had died, but he was standing right in front of you? Would you have been scared? Show me your scared face. Would you have been amazed? Let's see your amazed face. Or would you have been confused? Let's read John 20, 20. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, the soldiers put nails into his hands and his feet and they pierced his side with a sword. Jesus showed his scars to his disciples so they would know that it was truly him. The disciples were so happy that Jesus was there. Just imagine knowing that he was dead and then seeing that he's alive. But one of Jesus' disciples, a man named Thomas, was not there the night that Jesus appeared to them. So the other disciples told Thomas that Jesus was alive and had appeared to them. Let's read John 20, 25. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. What do you think of Thomas's response? It would be hard to believe that someone you knew had died but was now alive. But Jesus had told his disciples that he was going to die and rise again. Thomas had seen Jesus do many amazing miracles, but this one was hard for him to believe without seeing it with his own eyes. A week later, the disciples were all together again. Get your key again. Let's lock the door. Even though the door was locked, Jesus suddenly appeared in the house and he said, peace be with you. Jesus knew that Thomas had a hard time believing that he was really alive. Now let's read John 20, 27. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. How amazing. Jesus was alive and he came to show Thomas. Immediately, Thomas believed. He knew that this was Jesus and that he is God. Let's read John 20, 29. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus knew that he was going back to heaven soon. Some people would see him alive, but many people wouldn't. It would take faith in Jesus to trust that he rose from the dead. When we put our trust in Jesus, we believe that he died for our sins and rose again. We believe that he came to offer us life because he is alive. Can you guys say that with me? He, he is, is alive. alive. Jesus did many more miracles and appeared to many people while he was on earth. He showed many people that he is alive. And you know what else? He is still alive today. When we trust in Jesus to forgive our sins, he gives us new life in him and promises that we'll live forever with him in heaven. Thank you so much for joining me for the Big God Story. 
I love sharing these truths about Jesus with you. Up next, there'll be a few questions that you can discuss with your parents. I will see you again next week on your couch to hear more about Jesus. Bye.